Pickering Nuclear Plant, by the way, responsible for 14 percent of the province's power generation. And we need power. Seth Gray is a nuclear energy expert and president and CEO of Lightbridge Corporation. We last spoke to him about the power plant in Ukraine after it was first attacked by the Russians. And I thought, hey, this guy knows his stuff. We have to bring him back to talk about our own nuclear power. Seth, thanks for being here. I really appreciate your time once again. Pleasure to be with you, Kelly. So anyone who's seen Chernobyl, that series on HBO, it can be kind of nervous about nuclear power. I wonder if you could start off by speaking to the safety of it and the environmental benefits. Well, look, I think uh, HBO produced a very powerful documentary that scared people. And um, I, I think that people in Canada can take great comfort that uh, Canada never approved building reactors like were built at Chernobyl. These were very different technology that literally on the physics could never suffer what Chernobyl went through. That said, the industry has learned great lessons from the accidents that have happened and has implemented them. Uh, And not just at the companies, at the utilities, but also in the regulators, the Canadian Nuclear Nuclear Safety Commission is one of the greatest independent nuclear safety regulators in the world. It's headed by Romina Velshi, who is completely independent and focuses only on safety. I could tell you that no changes would be made to those plans and nothing would operate if they posed any threat to the public whatsoever. I know that nuclear energy, a lot of uh, nuclear plants are being decommissioned and shut down, but shouldn't we be looking at the environment, environmental benefits and how green nuclear energy is? Does it shock you that there are power plants that were set to close? Yeah, and that argument is starting to take hold now, even in Germany and some of the other places that have been most adamantly against nuclear power. And we're seeing in Germany that they're now planning to keep two plants open at least into next year, that we're slated to close later this year. The climate argument is absolutely essential. As we see in um, Ontario, the uh, surging power needs, winter's coming, but also a switch toward electric cars planned. The demand for electricity will be increasing dramatically, and the only way to meet environmental goals will be with nuclear power and now hydroelectric also provides clean power uh, but all but that's pretty much tapped out you can't increase hydroelectric power to the extent that you can increase nuclear power this pickering power plant was opened in 1971 what's the average lifespan of a nuclear power plant and why Well, they were originally in most places licensed for 40 years, not that they had a life of 40 years. They could last much, much longer than that. That was just uh, for when the license would be renewed. And the ones that have had the licenses extended, there's something of a joke that the only thing that's 40 years old in the building is the license itself, (laughs) that the equipment really is changed out and upgraded over the years. You know, what we're seeing happening at Darlington now, what is proposed now at Pickering, would be tremendous change outs of the equipment, in many ways really renewing the plant. Okay, so when you're talking about renewing the plant, what happens? They're they're looking at a refurb with four nuclear reactors of the six, and they first entered uh, operation in the mid '80s. Can you walk us through what refurbishing means when you're talking about a power plant? What does that entail? Right, right. Well, well, if you're looking at the outer structure, like the containment dome. It's checking that that is still robust enough to protect uh, anything from coming in from the outside and to hold inside any incident that that could happen there. But the other equipment inside there, that that's all fair game to change. The internals of the reactor core, the um, the piping, the valves, electrical systems. You, you check all this, you, you replace and upgrade what needs to be upgraded. And um, what, one of the things that's very interesting is if you went into this plant the day before it closed down for refurbishment, it would look very new to you because there's been such uh, maintenance of it at such a high level uh, the whole time it's been operating 
Uh, but, but changing out all those systems to last another few decades uh, is, is something the industry knows how to do even better now with even more advanced equipment than when the plant was first built in the 70s. Are there any possible risks when you're refurbishing? Well, no. The fuel is completely removed from the reactor core. You're in a building made of concrete and steel. So, no, there's no risk. There's nothing nuclear. There's no pressure buildup. There's nothing radioactive. It, it's literally like a um, an office building under construction in terms of the kinds of materials around you. We're speaking with Seth Gray, who's a nuclear energy expert about Ontario government's uh, plan to not only keep Pickering open to 2026, but also to ask the Ontario P- Power Generation uh, Company, the, the, the company that owns the plant, to launch a study into the feasibility of uh, refurbing four nuclear reactors that started operating in the mid-80s and keeping them uh, in, in running order. W- what would they learn from the, the study? Like, how do you study the feasibility of a refurb? What are you looking at? Well, you're looking at what equipment would need to be upgraded, what equipment would need to be replaced. You could consider increasing the power output of the plant, such as by opening the um, steam path in the turbines a bit. Uh, There might be ways to to get more energy from the existing size core of the reactor. You might look to whether you could go to a bit higher enrichment of uranium to also generate more power. Um, But basically, this is a well-known process that the industry has been through many times and set this plant on a whole new path for for decades of successful operation. And the alternative is fossil fuels. And that's Mm -hmm. been the reality everywhere in the world. Uh, It would be natural gas if this plant were not to have its um, license extended. And with the increasing use of electricity in the province, it would be quite a serious um, increase in CO2 emissions and also quite a serious increase on natural gas uh, for providing electricity that is desperately needed at our allies just to provide heat in the winter and to pull that natural gas away from allies that desperately need it and either don't want to get it from Putin or can't get it from Putin is something I also think we should consider. Right. You bring up a lot of great points. I have about 20 seconds left with you, but apparently the government thinks it could take $10 billion to refurb uh, Pickering. What's the cost of decommissioning a power plant? Well, the cost of decommissioning would be dramatically less. That's all paid for already. That decommissioning fund sits in the bank. It's available to spend, um, and that would continue to be built up for, for, for future decommissioning. The, the main point in these waning seconds is that that $10 billion to produce this massive amount of clean, reliable energy is the best possible way to spend that money to get that assured reliable power. There is no cheaper way over the life of these plants to generate that power. Seth, you've been a wealth of information. I want to thank you for joining us on the show today. Thank you, Kelly. Seth Gray, nuclear energy expert and president and CEO of Lightbridge Corporation.